friends uh, welcome to the further understanding about the indian society especially when we try to see that how the emergence of sociology took place in india and also the ongoing debates which have been there with regard to the understanding of indian society i think uh, when we try to see it in terms of perspectives the ways in which the society can be visualized in a very academic sense especially with a specific theoretical framework and also we try to see it in terms of its utility so i think uh, when we try to raise up these issues there are many perspectives which comes in our mind and for today's lecture we are planning to talk about the issue of the indological perspective the indological perspective is basically seen as one of an important perspective which tries to understand the society in a specific framework especially when we try to see that how the indian sociology has taken its trajectory so the role of indological perspective is very prime in this lecture we are going to deal about that what do we mean by the indology so the first important thing that we have to deal with is the meaning of indology the second important aspect that we have to see in the same framework is the people the pioneers who had contributed towards the development of indological perspective so the pioneers of indological perspective that may be the second aspect of this lecture and the third aspect is basically the significant contribution of professor g s ghore i think these are the three broader frameworks in which the today's lecture is going to be floated the meaning of indology the so called pioneers of indian uh, indology and finally the contribution of g s ghore i think somewhere we try to see the sort of an intermixing of these issues in that sense as such especially when we try to see that uh, the indology has gained its momentum with the presence of g s ghore or we can say that the understanding of g s ghore cannot be seen without understanding the indological perspective so in either of the way we try to see the sort of an intermix which is there and which is going to be an important aspect when we try to deal with the indological perspective now as we all know that g s ghore who is considered to be the founding father of indian sociology especially his contribution in terms of the so called institutionalization of sociology is going to be very important as such somewhere he was trying to institutionalize the presence of sociology in india like before g s ghore certain other contributions have been given by people like patrick gates or talking about b n seal and b k sarkar in the calcutta and the bombay school respectively but we try to find out that their contributions were significant but they could not institutionalize the understanding of sociology proper so in an academic discourse in terms of a discipline it was g s ghore who is considered to be the pioneer and the founding father of indian sociology he has headed the india's very important uh, department of sociology that is the bombay uh, university for the 30 years or so and there onwards his contribution is been shaped in a specific indological perspective that is going to be very significant as such now when we try to speak about the understanding of indology that of course is one aspect which we have to deal with that indology is the branch which deals with the interpretation of ancient text interpretation of ancient text i think this is going to be an important issue it's not only the ancient text even the linguistic studies of the problem of indian literature can also be supported along with this particular issue especially 
we have the archaeological documentation, we have the sociological and anthropological and as well as the ethnographic evidences about the understanding of Indian society through these texts. So, in that way the interpretation of ancient texts becomes an important tool for understanding and analyzing the Indian society. The, Indo in the Indological approach if you try to see it is rest upon the assumption that historically the Indian society and culture were unique. And that is the point of departure from where we can take G. S. Gure as the institutional father, because the Indian society and culture was seen as different from the western society. And in that particular framework we try to find out that the Indological approach plays a crucial role in putting Indian culture and society as a distinctive domain of knowledge. Especially we try to contextualize the Indian society through the understanding and interpretation of the various texts. Now, the point of course, is that which as which texts are going to be an important issue. Especially if you try to see there are many ancient texts, but those texts which supplies us with certain understanding about the Indian society and apart from that they are to be popular, they are to be celebrated, they are to be accepted that is again going to be important as such. Now, we try to see that how Indology is going to be or why it has to be the starting point for venturing into the understanding of sociology in India. The one prominent reason is that when sociology started I think uh, nobody has a clear cut idea in which direction it has to move. And in this blindfold path I think uh, Indological perspective definitely provided a way it provided a direction in which we have to move. Because there are certain things which are been part and parcel of Indian societies and which were well documented and well versed in our ancient text. So, the Indological approach it basically refers to the historical and the comparative method also, the historical and the comparative method. Historical and the comparative method based on the in Indian text is going to be an important aspect of the Indian society. Therefore, the Indologists use the ancient text, Indian history, epics, religious manuscripts and the text in the study of Indian social institutions. And that way I think all these references which we have spoken about the epics, the religious manuscripts or the ancient text all of them are going to be an important aspect for understanding and analyzing the social institutions of Indian society. The use of the Indological approach during the early formative periods especially for Indian sociology and anthropology was been seen in the works of few significant people. And if I name them I think S. V. Ketkar is an important figure who try to have the understanding of the Indian sociology from the Indological perspective. We also have the contribution of B. N. Seal to some extent and we have B. K. Sarkar, we have G. S. Gure and also we have a prominent social anthropologist Louis Jimo, whose contribution also is going to be significant. Maybe in the latter phase if I get time I will try to elaborate upon the Louis Jimo's contribution also. And apart from that we had the second generation of Indologists especially people like K. M. Kapadia and we have Iravati Karve. I think their contributions were quite significant when we try to deal with this issue of Indology and how the Indology has been taken care. I think Indology in that sense it basically provided or it has filled the gaps which have been there. So, the understanding of the Indian society from non discipline to discipline if you try to make that shift 
So, the gap which has been there, I think Indology has nicely filled that gap, especially the, the linkage of the text and the epics, the religion, how it is going to be wonderfully done by through this Indological perspective is going to be an important issue. Now, why G. S. Ghore has been so instrumental or how he tries to build up and bridge the gap for understanding the uniqueness of Indian society through the Indological perspective is going to be important. And before going into detail of that, let us try to see what were G. S. Ghore's initial life phases. As we know that G. S. Ghore, whose name was Govind Sadashiv Ghore, started in 1893 and he was born in a Malavan, a town in Konkan coastal region of the western India. In 1913, he joined the Elphinstone College. The Elphinstone College was a prestigious college in Bombay with having the Sanskrit honours and later on the B degree which he completed in 1916. Nineteen hundred and sixteen. <coughs> so, his contribution later on, how it can be translated into the specific text, was been clear when he had dealt with MA degree in Sanskrit and English from the same college in nineteen hundred and eighteen. So, in nineteen eighteen, he had his MA both in Sanskrit and English, and that has provided a sound grounding for him for understanding and analyzing the text in a specific framework. In 1919, he tried to go for the scholarship by the University of Bombay and he went to London. And there, if you try to see, in the School of Economics, he had to study with Professor L. T. Hobhaus. And later on, when he went to Cambridge to study with Professor W. H. R. Rivers, I think that provided him with the sound understanding about how to utilize the various skills, especially Rivers contribution in terms of the diffusionist perspective was instrumental in shaping his ideas about the understanding of Indian society and culture. And in 1923, after he submitted his PhD under Professor a, A C head, head on. He had uh, have the shift towards Bombay and where he had done significant contribution especially in reading on caste and race in India. And later on he was been appointed as the head of the department of department of sociology at University of Bombay. And he was one of the founding father with regard to the Indian Sociological Society, which was launched in 1952. And later on, if you try to see, he had provided very significant contributions, uh, which definitely has been a bearing of the Indological perspective. Now, the sociology in Bomb Bombay, if you try to see, that has been developed under the leadership of Professor Gure, and it was Petra Gates who invited him. who invited him to the University of Bombay to start the Department of Sociology in 1919. And I think this 1919 is the year <coughs> which we consider to be the starting point for the development of sociology as an academic discipline in the Indian society framework. And later on, Ghore was succeeded by Professor Gates and he became the reader and gradually he shifted over to the head department of sociology. He was the first appointed as a professor in 1934 and retired in 1959. Now, if you try to see his understanding, his creation, he created a sort of a, what you can say, certain amount of sociological awareness about the sociology through his contribution. Sociological awareness, which was basically seen as instrumental in providing the path to the second generation 
sociologist second generation sociologist and if you try to see the list of people it included the people like professor iravati karve m n srinivas we have people like k m kapadia and also we have k t merchant i p desai ip desai and we have professor y b damle and many such stalwarts which has become the second generation sociologist for giving and providing new shape to the indian sociology now if you try to see uh, guri's acclimatization and his uh, view towards the indian society and how indological perspective played a crucial role we try to find out that the so called understanding about the indian society through these sanskritic texts definitely played a crucial role in understanding sociologically as well as in a very scientific way the creation of the indian society and this understanding of course is very different from what has been talked about by the various eurocentric scholars so the indological perspective if we try to see uh, categorically it was having a particularistic view point in terms of having one's own way one's own vision of how or what is sociology in india because the ancient text has been written by the masses the people in that sense as such and their understanding definitely will have the sound uh, rootings in that sense as such if you try to see it in terms of sources the the, the various sources especially the epics the literature we have the important epics like mahabharata ramayana and also we have the manu smriti and many other such important epics of indian society which of course is known to everybody and these uh, epics were well accepted now the the idea is that these issues have been written in sanskritic language now when river uh, gure has been asked by uh, uh, rivers to go back to his country and to study his own culture and he has tried to focus upon the understanding of caste i think that is where he tried to invent upon the understanding of the caste through these literatures now the point is that on the one hand this alphanistin college which was providing an important base for having the scholarship in sanskrit a sort of a training in sanskrit interpretation of sanskrit and also his flair towards english so the gelling of the english and the sanskrit language and an, as an expression in terms of analysis was important uh, what you can say instrument in providing indology as a specific perspective like if you try to see that sometimes it is been said that in the sociology of g s gore we try to find out that there was a clouding of the sanskritic text or maybe the sanskrit was trying to overpower his understanding about the english literature so in that way the indology definitely if you are practicing indology you have to be have a good knowledge about the the use of sanskrit the knowledge about the sanskrit and its interpretation as such so in that way gs gore was the right person to talk about to focus upon and to deliberate upon the under, the indian society through this sanskritic literature if you try to see gore's contribution especially his caste and race gore was known for this particular work that is caste and race in india and he was trying to see that it was this academic traditions of the indology which has made him to create the sociological creations and research in the coming future gure's broader area of interest were the process of evolution of culture that is one important thing evolution of culture its understanding that is going to be significant in that sense as such and apart from that he was trying to see the understanding of hindu civilization in particular hindu civilization in particular and we try to see 
the origin and the proliferation of the different varieties of Indo-European civilizations, which con constitutes the range of Gure's study. As a sociologist, Gure feels imperative of exploring this unifying and synthesizing process that is of the Indo-European civilization. And that synthesis definitely provided a sound ground for or the sound footing for the development of sociology in terms of the establishment. In spite of many diversions, explorations and analysis of the process of cultural unity in India, the major thrust of Gure's writing was to have a clear cut understanding and visionary about the Indian society. Now, we try to see that G. S. Gure's on caste and race, if you try to see that was in 1932. Gure is also known for his important contribution on what the caste is and he tries to see caste on the basis of the specific characteristics. He did not want to define it, rather he wanted to understand caste in terms of the characteristics which are as follows. That caste is basically seen as based on the segmental division. Second thing which he tries to uh, speak about is the question of endogamy that caste is based on the principle of endogamy. He was also speaking about the issue of hierarchy of caste to be seen in terms of hierarchy, in terms of hierarchical divisions that it tries to divide the society definitely on the basis of hierarchy. And he was also trying to speak about that the institution of caste necessarily involves the restrictions on the social interaction especially with regard to the food habits and the social intercourse. And along with that, the caste also is based on the fixed occupation. So, restrictions on food habits, fixed occupation, hierarchy, endogamy, segmental divisions. And apart from that, if you try to see, we try to find out that there are certain privileges which are associated with the specific caste, privileges associated with the specific caste. So, in that way the caste was seen as a system which has these characteristics and they provides a crucial ground for understanding the realities of caste. The caste and race in India if you try to see it has the combination of historical, anthropological, historical, anthropological and also the sociological perspective to understand to understand the kinship caste system in India. He tries to analyze the caste system through the textual evidences. The textual evidences as I said were from the prominent text and he was trying to have the interpretation of these ancient texts on the one hand and trying to give the structural and cultural meanings on the basis of these texts. And in that way, we try to have a sound footing about how the understanding of Indian society can be seen through the Indological perspective. Now, we also try to find out that the kinship in the caste in India, it basically served as one of the integrative forces and providing a small framework for analyzing and integration of the Indian society, because it was across the nation, we had the combinations of caste and kinship and which were uh, significant in terms of understanding the Indian culture in a specific sense. Now, if you try to go further in terms of theoretical approaches and the methodological applications of Gure, we try to find out that Gure's rigor and discipline are seen as the legendary in the Indian sociological circles. In the application of the theories of empirical exercises, we try to see the specific methodologies which have been used and to put it differently, Gure was not a dogmatic, he was not a dogmatic. Rather, in terms of the use of theory and methodology, he was quite open and flexible. Despite his training at Cambridge under Professor W. H. Rivers and his broad acceptance of the structural functional perspective. Gure did not strictly conform to the functionalist traditions when interpreting the complex facets of the Indian society. 
and the culture which he choose to in invest investigate was having certain amount of theoretical pluralism. So, this theoretical pluralism is going to be an important aspect to have a wider horizon about looking to the Indian society. So, being dogmatic is not going to be a fruitful uh, uh, event for developing and analyzing the society in a domain in a specific academic circle. The rather, if we have the theoristic uh, theoretical pluralism, then it is going to have the different results. When Gure conducted his survey, especially in terms of research involving the primary data collection, he did not conform to the accept accepted methodological canons, rather he ventured into the generalization on the basis of understanding on the basis of the unrepresentative evidences. So, the generalization was more based on the unrepresentative evidences which has not been explored earlier and in that way in one of his uh, work that is social tensions in India, he was trying to explore upon the possibilities which can be thought of with regard to the sociology. Gure has emphasized on the Indological approach in the study of social and cultural life in India, especially when we try to see Gure's utilize the literature from the if specific works of the Vedas, the Shastras, then we have this Manusmriti, the poetry of Kalidasa and also we have the important contributions from the regional literature, especially the Marathi literature, where he is trying to invent upon the ways of exploring various aspects of the Indian society. Even he has gone to an extent of trying to understand Bankim Chand Chatterjee's work on various issues. So, in that way Gure has to be seen as a visionary, who is trying to understand the society from the various perspective. One of the theme, which he is trying to build upon and I think uh, which has been said about Ghure is that he the sweep of Ghure's work if you try to see it has the intellectual range of interest and people sometimes has been criticizing him saying that he was just like a discrete butterfly. Ghure moved from one theme to another with the equal interest and the ability. So, Ghure was what he was trying to make out trying to touch upon the varied aspect of the Indian society, so that all the possible issues can be turned on rather than putting it off. So, in that way his contribution appears to be quite significant. He also showed India to be inexhaustible mind, where sociologists and social anthropologists could conduct endless explorations. So, he was trying to see or seek the possibilities which can be thought of in sociology and social anthropology. He explored the possibilities in terms of the spirit of inquiry and the commitment to advancing the frontiers of knowledge. And in that way, Gure's precious gift to Indian sociology and social anthropology was to raise the new frontiers in the domain of knowledge. His diversified interests are also reflected in the great varieties of works, especially if you try to see, he has worked on the themes like kinship, caste, marriage. He has also spoken about the aboriginals. He has also spoken about the issue of social differentiation and social stratification. He has also spoken about the village and the religions of India. So, in that way he tries to cover up various aspects and it is not only talking about the rural and the classical India, he was even ta talking about the process of urbanization, industrialization which was leading to many problems in the Indian society. Ghure in that way tried to not only touch upon the Indological perspective in terms of ancient texts, but he also has conducted certain field works which is going to be crucial. especially his contribution should not be limited to simply gauging or analyzing the ancient text. He has also undergone certain field work. So, in that way we cannot criticize Gore to be re reductionist, rather we have to see that he tries to have the varied facet of 
the uh, methodologies which we try to see in terms of data collection, in terms of analysis and that is how we try to see his contribution. Now, if we have to be more systematic in terms of his contribution in a very specific sense, I think uh, it can be visible through the significant contribution. One important contribution if we have to make out is God and man. That of course, is a significant contribution that came in 1962. Then another important contribution which we try to see is Indian sadhus, Indian sadhus which was in 1964. Then he also has the issue of religious consciousness. Then he also tried to speak about the two Brahmanical institutions. Two Brahmanical institutions, that is, Gotra and Charan. Gotra and Charan. Then he has also contributed towards the sex habits of the sample middle class people of Bombay. He also had done family and kin in the family and kin in the Indo European family and kin in the Indo European culture that was in 1962. And he also has worked on the contemporary problems in India, particularly in the cities and the civilization that was again in 1962. And apart from that, the Mahadev Kohli's the Mahadev Kohli's that is another important contribution that came in 1963 and then the social tensions in India. The social tensions in India that came in 1968. So, I think if you try to glance through the categories of work that he has done, God and man talking about the philosophical and the spiritual linkage between man and the God. Indian sadhus talking specifically about the, the people on asteism in that sense as such putting away and their contribution. Then the religious consciousness again it has something to do with the religion talking about the Brahminical institutions, talking about the Indo-European culture in terms of family and kinship lineage uh, linkage and then the Mahadev Kohli is the tribal groups. And apart from that the social tensions in India which is trying to see the problems which are emerging in the urban India. So, I think if you try to see the range of work, I think uh, we try to find out that his contribution appears to be significant as such. Even the caste and race in India definitely that was one of the leading work which uh, Gure tried to pinpoint. And this work definitely provided the landmark in terms of building up and raising the Indological perspective. Now, if you try to see that later generation of Indian sociologists who had basically adopted or have been trained in the craft of Indology, Gure definitely had taken care of the fieldwork traditions along with the issue of the use of the ancient text. And he had even gone to an extent that he had done a monograph on the Mahadev Kohli's and also has produced certain empirical works especially which is relevant to the social anthropology. So, in that way we try to find out that the contribution of Ghure as an Indologist is going to be significant. Now, if you try to see further I think uh, as I mentioned earlier also uh, Louis Dumont's contribution if you try to see. I think uh, Louis Dumont uh, who can be seen as uh, the person who tries to uh, speak more about the issue of structuralism in that sense as such and his contribution. He was seen as a structuralist with regard to the understanding of uh, the caste system in India, but his structuralist understanding was also based on the interpretation of the ancient text. Especially he has used the Manusmriti, 
Rig Veda and the other ancient text which is going to be the providing uh, figures or the providing base for building up his discourse on the caste. Now, this understanding which he tries to generate on caste definitely it has to have some bearing from the Vedas and the Manusmritis. The why that distancing was there between the different categories, why you have the question of the purity in that sense there sir, because uh, he has tries to work upon the fact that the caste system has to be understood in terms of the purity in that sense as such. And he was talking about the sort of polarization which is there especially in terms of the structural understanding, he was trying to build upon the two poles that is the pure and the impure and the base of that is the religion. So, this pure and impure that is fine, but how or from where these pure and impure have are to be derived and these things have been documented in the various texts which we are trying to emphasize upon. Especially we try to find out that one has to prevent or one has to have the purity of their body, one has to have the purity of the family name that is the kula in that sense as such one's own kul and one has to have the purity of maybe the bigger entities that is the caste and the other issues the caste. So, in that way if you try to see the, uh, the units of caste and where how this caste units have been seen in terms of endogamy, we try to find out that in order to have the retainment of the purity, one has to have these restrictions in that sense as such. So, I think the segmental division of society of the caste has to be seen from these particular issues. And in that way we try to see that Dumo's contribution also falls into the category of the Indological perspective. Then we also has certain other works like to name a few Iravati Karve that we have mentioned earlier. Iravati Karve has tried to work upon the issue of kinship organization in India. Kinship organization in India and this work was also based upon the fact that he was uh, Iravati Karve was basically trying to see the contribution of the Mahabharat with regard to the understanding of the lineage within the Mahabharat that has been quoted. And apart from that the, the, the kinship usages, the terminolo ter terminologies in north and south are all based on the various texts which Iravati Karve tries to devise upon. So, in that way we try to see that how the text can the ancient text the sacred text can become very meaningful. Like when we try to speak about the whole issue of the interpretation of the ancient text, I think it involves certain amount of scientificness. Because one aspect of theology which has to be taken care is that one has to be really empathetic while understanding and analyzing empathetic about analyzing the issue of uh, what you can say caste or uh, sorry uh, about the text especially when we try to see this empathy it has to be seen in a fashion that one has to go into the spirits of the author so that the originality is not distorted means we have to understand what the author wants to communicate and in the same spirit we have to analyze what was the nature of the society that was prevalent during that period of time. Now, if you try to see that these interpretations if they are scientifically done may yield the varied results and the scientific results. The only thing in that sense of course, is the precautions that one has to take is the text are to be selected into a context they are to be seen that they are widely represented and also their acceptance is going to be high. So, that they can raise the universal values, they can have the universalistic, universalistic model for understanding and analyzing the society. Now, the point is that 
these texts which we are speaking about. These texts are basically seen as what you can say the documented text which are not going to be changed in that sense as such, but its meaning can change. Meaning can change in a sense that people can have the different arguments, the people can have the different ways of interpreting the same text and in that way the text provides the changeology within the understanding of the issues, the social issues, especially when we try to see the how the person is interpreting, how much he is trained into the Sanskrit text and how he is going to be expressive in terms of the scientific temperament. If these issues are taken care, I think Indological perspective can be seen as a very sophisticated way of expressing and understanding the Indian society. Now, we try to see further in that sense as such, I think uh, Indological perspective is something which we try to see is going to have the varied results. It was seen as one of the initial pioneering uh, perspective, because when sociology started, it did not have a very sound grounding, although functionalism was been prevalent, the field work traditions were there. But Gure wanted to have that sociology, which will represent the uniqueness of its culture. And in that way, he tries to emphasize more upon the Indological perspective. But when we say the Indological perspective in terms of acceptance, we also try to see that there are the critiques of the Indological perspective. And how we can see the sort of critiques which are involved. Like one important aspect that has been raised with regard to or the serious concern which has been raised about the Indological perspective is that the Indological perspective were basically written in the Sanskritic text. So, only those texts can be incorporated which are basically having the understanding of society in the Sanskrit. But what about the other regional literatures? What about the other regional languages in that sense as such? I think they are going to be sidelined or one can say that it is the interpretation of the text, but again the point is that maybe there can be the variation with regard to the understanding of the meaning of the Sanskrit that can also vary in that sense as such. So, I think uh, the, the question with regard to the Sanskritic text is put as a critique. Second important thing which has been talked about with regard to the so called Indological perspective and sometimes in a very brief way we say that it is seen as a textual method or the textual perspective, because everything was based on text. So, it was basically away from the field. So, the field view was completely missing. So, we have only the text, the textual method which was been used, but its linkage or its empirical verifications has been questioned in that sense as such. The third important aspect as a critique which we try to see is the Indological perspective, definitely the scholars who have written and I think uh, it is the question of the literates. The literates are only going to be the people who can contribute or who can write and especially if you try to see in a historical framework that who were the literates. So, normally we try to see that the Brahmins were the people who were having a command over the Sanskrit and for writing the scripts. So, in that way one important critique which has been raised about the Indological perspective is that it is seen as a Brahminical version, the Brahminical version of understanding the Indian society. And I think in that way we try to find out that Brahminical version is not the representative version, because masses may incorporate many other categories of the people and in that way that was another serious concern which has been raised about the issue of the uh, Indological perspective. And we also try to find out that the Indological perspective also has its limitation in terms of the selection of the words or the version, select of the words and the version. Because we may have the various versions, we have 
the various verses, which verse has been taken, which version has been taken is an important concern. Because if some selective versions are been taken or some selected verse of that versions are been taken. So, it can give a limited understanding, but the author the, 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 the user might have uh, what you can say denied or they have not considered the other words of the same text. So, in that way we sometimes can say that one has to be really scientific and representative when we try to speak about the use of the Indology. And apart from that we also try to see that the Indological perspective in terms of limitation, in terms of critique is also seen because how we can build up the sociology without text. Definitely as we said earlier also that the ancient text its interpretation is Indology. And I think in that way it provides a very fruitful ground for knowing about the society. It is just like the time machine going back to the historical era and knowing about that as such. So, in that way it was an important tool, but the point of course is that what can be the other possibilities to explore the past without this text I think is going to be an, another serious concern when we try to uh, see something other than Indology. So, we can say that although the so called anthropology has its own limitation with regard to these specific issues in terms of representativeness, in terms of its interpretation, in terms of its lang uh, text in that sense as the language of the text, in terms of the method which has been used. But in many other senses we try to find that the Indological perspective was providing a sound background for the building up of the sociology, the, the, the founding sociology in a very different way. People like G. S. Gure who has been rated as the founding father. I think uh, they try to understand the things in a very specific way and he was very clear uh, although it has been said that when Ghuri wanted to start up sociology, he was not clear that in which direction he wants to go or in which direction the sociology has to flow. So, in that way I think this Indology provided him the path that is that when nothing when there is a blindfold when there is no clarity Indology definitely has provided a way out to move out from these situations. And in that way the understanding of Indology has to be seen in terms of the fact that it fills the gap, it tries to accommodate the knowledge which is missing or which has not been put in a specific framework. So, documentation definitely has its own utility, but again we have to see that which document is going to be more important as such and how it has to be interpreted. If we have these limitations or if we can overcome these limitations, we can have the important contributions with regard to the understanding of the Indian society through the Indological perspective. Now, I think if you try to speak about the various contributions in terms of an understanding of the Indian society and particularly for you have want to have further readings, then I think uh, I can suggest you that you should go through the G. S. Gure's important contribution that is caste and race in India that is through this popular precaution Bombay that was in 1969. And I think that provides a sound ground for how he tried to use the Indological perspective. Then we also have another very good work that is on Ghure and it is by S. K. Parmanik. S. K. Parmanik and his contribution is the sociology of G. S. Ghure. Sociology of G. S. Gure, uh, which is from the Rawat publication, and one can have the good evidences about the contribution of G. S. Gure in terms of the various framework. Then we also has Ramakrishna Mukherjee's important contribution. Ramakrishna Mukherjee's contribution, that is sociology of Indian sociology. sociology of Indian sociology that is one of the pioneering and path breaking work 
it deals with the initial phase of the development of sociology in India. Then as I told earlier also, we have the important work by Professor T. N. Madan that is on pathways and if you want to have the further understanding in terms of critique, we can have the work by Professor D. N. Dhanagre. Professor D. N. Dhanagre whose work is themes and perspective in Indian sociology, themes and perspective in Indian sociology. themes and perspective in Indian sociology. So, I think these are the sound works of the further readings which you can generate and especially as I mentioned you about uh, Lewis Dumo's contribution also that Lewis Dumo's contribution if you try to see. So, the important work is Homo hierarchicus that is caste and its implication. caste and its implication. So, that work also tries to provide that how we can see Louis Demo as an Indologist and even the versions uh, sorry the verses are also mentioned in the text. So, one can have a sound understanding about Louis Demo also how he has been seen as Indologist. Then K. M. Kapadia's work is again a prominent work which one can see through the, uh, uh, the work of Iravati Karvi can also be seen that is the kinship organization in India. There also we had the sound understanding about the use of Indological perspective, which can be seen as an important tool for analyzing the Indian society. So, with these words, I think uh, you can have further readings, further deliberations upon this particular issue, so that we can have a more clarity about the understanding and the critique of Indological perspective. Thank you. Mm -hmm.